Hello YouTube, I'm Teresa and this is the first tutorial I've done in a while. Um, so I'm just getting back into the swings of YouTube. So today we are going to do some yarn dyeing. Uh, but first, before we do that, I need to get all the yarn uh, prepped. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing over here. For you have to excuse me, allergies are running rampant today, so I'm doing my best here. So I have prepared some pieces of just bare yarn to tie into the skeins. So I will, we're going to get them all prepped and then I will show you the next step. So I'm going to be prepping all the fingering that I'm going to do. And I generally tie one to two strings into each skein. This is just preference. I'm going to go ahead and get to that, speed it up a little bit, and I'll be back with you guys to show you the next step in my process. So today I'm going to be dyeing a new colorway and I'm going to be dyeing eight skeins of fingering and eight skeins of decay. The colorway is going to be called Spiritual Healing. Um, it's going to be the next installment of my Zen collection. So to get set up for the dyeing, we are going to be using four of the long trays. Four of the long trays. So to prepare each long tray, um, these are going to be pre-soaked in citric acid water. So I do two tablespoons of citric acid per tray. And then each tray gets an inch of water. So I take my handy dandy yardstick and I just run water. It, it might be closer to like an inch and a half. So I'll just stick it in there and start pouring. Steady hand, man. Steady hand. over an inch, more like an inch and a quarter. <clears throat> so and then I'll mix it up and each pan gets four skeins. Um, I, use, I can do four, I can do five depending on the colorway, but four for this particular colorway is just perfect. So mix it up and then we're going to put four skeins of each. So we just press them into the pan press them into the pan and then we're going to let these sit for a little while. Oh, I have to eat lunch and do a few things and then by that point these should have sat long enough where they are ready to be dyed. Now generally like I'll just get a big tub of water and just soak a bunch of yarn in it but since I know exactly what I'm doing with these and I want to start with these that's why I'm setting them up.
morning, so it's ready first thing in the morning. Uh, since I work in a garage and I wanted to film this, I decided to do all of it uh, during the day when I have better light. So I got all these ready. Um, so now they're just they just need to soak for a little bit. So I would say 30 minutes minimum, um, but this is probably going to set for like an hour or so because I. I just discovered another full-size gardener snake stuck in one of these sticky traps uh, left by our pest control people. So I am going to let these sit <laughs> now that they are soaking in the citric acid water and I am going to go free a snake. So I'll be back in a little bit. Hello again, it's me. So now we're to the step where it's time to mix up the colors. We need to get a little bit of bo water boil in here. And we'll start measuring out the colors we need to mix. to a boil I'm going to introduce today's player shiitake uh, mushroom which is also a fiber reactive dye we'll be doing some true black some spruce And a very little bit of this yellow. Now, y'all don't know this about me, but I really don't like yellow on the yard. <laughs> I have a I have a hard time um, finding good good yellows. But I've, this bronze and this Palomino Gold by Dharma is like it's pretty good. I also enjoy uh, the the way the Aztec Gold looks by Jacquard. Um, but yellow is. Yellow is tricky for me. <laughs> it's not my favorite to use. So, there are many different ways that I measure. Um, some, I, some different colorways I use uh, a scale and measure it that way. And other times I use just uh, teaspoons, regular teaspoons, kitchen teaspoons. And for some colorways, I work from a liquid stock and I use also teaspoons tablespoons to measure out so for this particular colorway I am using teaspoons um, this is gonna be for this particular colorway I'm using a very little bit of each of the dye to create a very layered look so um, the ones that will be in liquid are the true black the palomino gold the bronze the shiitake and the spruce and then speckling of the pecan and at the end the Aztec uh, gold and the yellow so I know it sounds like a lot, but we're like, I'm literally using the pinch 1 16th. Come on, focus. I don't know. It's hard for me to tell if you can see that, but it's the, it's a very teeny tiny little bit. And I'll just use like two to three of each color. So for the bronze, we're going to do two of these. Actually, I'm going to do three. I'm going to do three of the bronze. I'm going to do three of the bronze, three of the shiitake, and two of the true black. I don't mix any citric acid into the dye, especially if it's going to be a stock. So the Palomino Gold will also be three. Now, generally, I um, during the winter time or anytime the garage has to be shut, I wear an aspirator when I'm doing this because there's 
the you don't know what particles are going up into the air, but because the garage door is open, I tend to not wear the aspirator when I can have that open because there's really good airflow. So we always want to be taking notes. I found very very important. It's very very important to be writing down what you're doing as you're doing it because when you do a whole bunch of colors and you try to go back, it's sometimes very hard to remember what you did. Now we have these four colors ready, and spruce will also be liquid form, but that's the last one that goes in. So we're just going to, I fill it about halfway, and then I mix. And then we'll fill it up the rest of the way with cooler water. I recently got one of these mixers, which is very useful. It's for, I guess, espresso, but it's very, very useful for stirring. So now to each cup, I'm going to fill, uh, fill it all the way up with cool water. To the 32 out. These cups have, have numbers on them, so I fill them all the way up to the rim, which is a quart. Or maybe I can get a little higher. Now I just need to do that three more times. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. cups of each <laughs> oh well I'll have a little bit more for later so now we have three more of each that we need to mix I'm not going to fill them quite as high. And mixing time. I know. Uh, my daughter doesn't think I'm funny either. So, yeah. Gotta stay true to oneself. So we're going to start with the decay. Um, a, a new method that I have been using quite a bit is starting with the skeins twisted. It hits many sides of the yarn because of the twist. So I feel like the color gets more evenly spread throughout. So these have been sitting in two tablespoons of citric acid for well over an hour. They're fully saturated skeins of yarn. So you just want to adjust them so that they're kind of twisted a little bit and it's taking up most of the room. So you're going to have room here that you want, you do want the dye to fall into, but it doesn't have to be a ton of open space. Okay, so I'm going to turn the heat on. I have uh, I'm going to turn the heat on at about two hundred and twenty degrees, two hundred degrees. 
Now I I know that this side of my, my burner runs a little bit hot, so that one I'm gonna set at like 160 and just let that warm up. All right, now we're just gonna start applying some color. On. And then we're going to let it sit for a little bit. All right, so it is definitely clear now. We're going to start the other color and I'm going to work it from this end. clear and then I believe yep that one clear and then I'm gonna flip it over so we can apply the last two colors um, and do a little speckling and it's time for the next color for that one well, for this one we're gonna flip so you're gonna grab your trusty tongs to flip these suckers over. go for a little bit to clear and I'm going to work on the other pan. Alright, so at this point, alright, so at this point, um, because there's so much water in there, I did bump up the temperature. Uh, my right burner, which is the one that you're seeing on camera, I bumped that up to 240 and, and or 260 and 200 and the left burner when you're adding water in it's hard for the stove to keep up so i have to make it higher temperature for a little bit so it's coming back up to temperature color to do which I didn't pre-mix so I added in the true black so we have one more color to do which I didn't pre-mix and that's the spruce um, and I think I might have changed my mind on this spec I kind of want to see what it looks like once the true black soaks in um, but I think that I might forego the speckles so we'll see Hi. <laughs> while we're waiting for that to clear um, I am going to measure out the spruce color. That's going to be the last color that we go in here. Now, 
these pans are really full of water so I'm gonna once the black clears I'm gonna siphon some of the water off and I'm gonna use that to mix up the spruce so right now we're just measuring come back and I'll show you how I siphon off this pan water to mix it and then put on the last color so I've decided to flip these and kind of make sure they're all untwisted as they're taking in that black I already did it with the other pan and I just thought it was a good idea to get open them up so that that black is the hardest one to, to get saturated. It's all the surface area it can get. I am just loving this colorway. time there's still quite a bit of color in there yet and then we'll do that. here is something I know a lot of you asked me about in the last video I did um, you want to keep the temperature anywhere between 180 and 200 just the cusp of 200 so and to maintain that with this much water i mean you can see that the water level is really high it's maintaining about 190 and that's what it's set at so i mean it just depends on the style of uh cooktop you're using um, but that that's what you want to aim for so still waiting okay and we're about uh, okay we're back and baby has risen all the way up so we are gonna siphon some of this water off to mix the spruce that we measured out so I'm just gonna a little bit of black you can see but barely that will totally mix up as after we get this on we're gonna let it run for about 25 minutes and then it's gonna sit all night so you'll be you'd be surprised what the cooling off will suck up into the yarn but we don't want to add any more water to this pan otherwise it will overflow so I'm just siphoning off some of the water to mix up the spruce with. So for a moment, I'm going to cover this up again. So we can use a little mixer, to, a little mixer, give this a good stir and do. Give this a good stir, and then this will be the final color. I'm not going to show me uh, dyeing the fingering weight because this video will be entirely too long. So, now it's mixed up very very hot <laughs> we are going to just add this last color on and let it run for a while until the heat clears So 
there you have it. The spruce is on. So I'm gonna let that run for probably a good, I'm gonna get it back up to temperature around 190-ish, which it shouldn't be too off from that. There we go, We're around 190-ish. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump the temperature back down to 160 and 200. And I'm gonna cover this bad boy up and let it run for a while. So I'm really happy with the way those are looking. I'm really glad that I decided to forego the speckling um, because I think it's gonna be awesome just like it is. So thank you for tuning in today. Uh, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you aren't already. It really helps me out. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. I don't know what a, like a witty sign off is. So see you later. See you next time, Yarnies.